close your eyes and take a couple of good long deep in and out breaths. And then stay with the sensation of the breathing all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out. We meditate to bring the mind some peace. We meditate to bring the mind some clarity. So have respect for the mind's desire to get the peace and the clarity. If another thought comes in, you just say, nope, not right now. Let it go. Let it go. And you'll be right back with the breath. Each time you return to the breath, reward yourself with a really comfortable breath. So the mind begins to want to stay here more and more. Because the mind is like a committee. It's got different members, and some of them want long-term happiness, and others want a quick fix, something right now. They want it fast. And so the meditation actually helps you with both. In other words, by meditating you strengthen good qualities of the mind. Alertness, mindfulness, concentration. And at the same time you give the, the body and the mind an immediate sense of pleasure. This may take a little work in the beginning, but as you get to know your breath you begin to realize there are certain ways of breathing that feel forced and uncomfortable, and there are other ways that feel really refreshing, nourishing, filling the whole body with a sense of well-being and fullness. And you want to be able to tap into that, because that's your strength, to fight off the other members of the committee. You want to have respect for your desire for long-term happiness. This is one of the reasons why we bow down so much around here. We bow to the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha, because they represent the quest for long-term happiness, and that something really is worthy of respect. We have this ability to find long-term happiness through our own thoughts, words, and deeds. There's a lot in the world out there that's going to tell you you can't do that. Either long-term happiness is not possible or you have to get it from somebody else. But the Buddha is respect, asking you to respect your desire for long-term happiness and your ability to find it. So when you bow down to the Buddha, try to keep that in mind the next time you're Greed, aversion, and illusion come up and say, I want something right now, right now. You're going to ask yourself, are you going to bow down, down to them? What do they look like? If you were to make a statue of greed, what would it look like? A statue of aversion, a statue of delusion, what would they look like? And we find ourselves bowing down to these things all the time, submitting to their power. Wouldn't you rather bow down to the Buddha, who's having you bow down to your desire for true happiness and to respect your ability to find it? So show some respect for that. This ability to show respect is something that's really lacking in our culture, but at the very least learn how to show respect for your desire for true happiness. Then you find you want to respect others who also show that same respect. That's where you find a, develop a community of like-minded people with the same values who can strengthen one another. So remember, there's a choice in the, in the mind. Who are you going to bow down to? Ask yourself, what would greed look like if you were making a statue of it? What would aversion look like? What would delusion look like? And what would you look like bowing down to those? Wouldn't you rather bow down to the Buddha up here and all that he represents, both in his own life and in the potentials in your life, for true, long-lasting, blameless happiness? Keep asking yourself that question every day and you'll come up with some good answers.